What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fath, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through Friday's NBA slate. Um, I was out yesterday. Sorry about that. I'm actually going to be in Idaho next week for uh, a while, but I will be here every day to to work and do to, you know to do all my stuff. I just won't be able to play myself, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, but I'm excited about tonight. It's a good slate, and uh, you know, it's all. I always feel good when I have a have a flight that that that, that takes off while the games are still going and, and ends after they land. I've had really good results with that. So okay, I'm okay. Excited. So I'm just trying to find any narrative I can to get going. How about you? How'd you do yesterday? And uh, sorry for your Yankees, but uh, how did everything else go? Yeah, I just messed around with the various uh, various small slates last night, like between the two game NBA, the two game, um, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the one game showdown slate. I even played some baseball showdown. Just basically grind it out. I make a little bit. I think I lost a little bit after the day yesterday, mm-hmm. but um, I'm having trouble. Um, getting into the nba season um i think it's yeah i think a lot of people are i don't think you're alone. yeah I, I you know i watched a little bit of the games um the last bigger slate and i just i just i need to i need to just get into the nba a little bit that's the best i can describe yeah. it. um but but about fantasy you know what i'm ready to ready to go and everything like that i just don't feel as though it i don't feel as this nba season quite yet like it's you know what it's because i remember towards the end of last season I was, it, it was like, oh, another injury, another this, another that. I really couldn't wait for it to be over at the time. Mm-hmm. And it seems like nothing's changed. You know what I mean? It seems like it's day one and it's the same crap. It seems like people have been playing all summer and they're all exhausted somehow. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah. it kind of, it's kind of nuts in a way. You know, it's yeah. like, at least in football, usually after the season's over, everybody comes back healthy. You start all over again. Basketball, it's it's like they're, 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 sick, they're injured still. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. So, but, but you know what? I, I think I'll get more into it when I see some of these uh some of these rookies play a little bit more uh and and um but uh we shall see yep one thing i will say is as as just kind of like lead into the slate i think that the the pricing is getting tighter which is good um uh you can't just play whoever you want anymore as a matter of fact i mean we'll talk about this we go through these i mean when i rated my guys by my usual metrics i mean they're not that many like just like give me plays like if, if at all as far as i'm right, looking at right. so it's uh that, that that i like i like i like slates like that yep me too um i i agree and i think that it it is hard to figure out the season early on especially when teams are still sort of figuring out their rotations and and whatnot and um yeah it's been a weird uh a weird a weird start to the to the year even for last night i was watching the the, the laker game and everything and I mean, when you have when you have your three guards going one for twenty five from the floor, and you still have a chance to win the game, that's pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a team have one go one for twenty five with their guards from the floor in a game, and yeah. it still almost won it. Um, but yeah, so we're, we'll we'll go through it tonight. Like, there's there's some things that stand out to me. As a, I don't know what I'm missing. That is there like there might be some injuries, but we'll I'll, we'll go game by game. But there are some some spots where I'm like, why are these projections so high? And um, I guess oh, you we'll were talking about the Denver guys. Yeah, I mean, I understand a little bit, but there's. It's, I presume Jamal Murray's out, right? Well, but th- that's the weird part. I don't understand. I've got the, I've got Murray as being in. Oh really? The, oh no, no, there it is. There it goes. Okay. okay, it literally just updated it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that, that, that's why it was confusing. I was like, how can they both be that? Anyway, that's 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 important. Anyway, we'll we'll get to the Denver thing in a little bit, but um, we've seen that as a little bit of a trap before sometimes. So interesting to try and, to try and think about. Um, all right, so. Let's start with the first one, uh, New Orleans and Charlotte. By the way, I, that's something I really think New Orleans is is this this is the team that, that I said before the year. It wouldn't surprise me if they were a play in team, and it wouldn't surprise me if they literally won the West. They, I mean, they they have incredible talent. It's it's just a matter of how healthy Zion is, how he looks, everything. He looked fantastic. Obviously, probably the best matchup in basketball for them the other night. How they're only favored by six and a half year is a little bit beyond me, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like they should be a huge favorite in this game. I understand it's on the road and the NBA nine and a, six and a half is a lot of points, but it's I just think that they're they're really, really good. Um, having said all of that, from a from a fantasy perspective, this is a game that you should want things because of the the pace and and all the, you know, it's, it's gonna be a high scoring, it, it's nobody plays defense. But I'm sort of having a little bit of trouble getting to to much on the New Orleans side. On the Charlotte side, it's the same guys. It's 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 do we take you could take a shot on Ubre? I'm just telling everybody. Everybody thinks he got hurt the other night. We're like, what, what was he hurt? What was wrong with him? And all this Ubre, it's just gonna happen. They're gonna you're gonna see minutes rotate and fluctuate in ways that just don't make sense. Um, especially for guys like Ubre, but it's always been that way for him. 
Uh, but I, I think that Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier are reasonable. Um, they're both on my list, but I don't feel the need to have to play anyone here. Those would probably be my two favorites. And and I guess you could throw in Jalen McDaniels as a potential uh, as a potential value play. That's that's where I'm at basically. Uh, where do, what do you have with this game? Yeah, I have this game uh, giving me some you know uh, middle of the road plays, all in kind of the same price range. You know, I, I for the and they're just kind of like the normal guys. Like in New Orleans, I like I like CJ McCollum and I like Ingram. You know, they 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 rate to be you know okay. You know, not 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 great. And, and this is going to be kind of a theme throughout my my breakdowns of these games. Is I'm going to get guys sort of like this in most games. Uh, and then uh, look, it, obviously stuff could open up a little bit later or whatever it is. We'll talk about if Denver makes much of a difference. But um, and then on the Charlotte side, yeah, I mean, I reiterate your. I don't want to say caution. I guess the best I can describe with respect to Ubre, Ubre can be a, a difficult guy to get right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's chalk. Sometimes it's not in chalk. Sometimes when you think he's starting, he's probably a worse play. Sometimes when you think he's coming off the bench, he's a better. It's it's he's a he's a tough guy. I mean, listen, he he can be active, and 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 sometimes he can disappear. He's, he's a tough guy to play. Mm -hmm. um, but I like. I'll tell you who I always like to play. You know, I, I there's a thing in MMA where you want to play guys that just kind of fight for your money. Like Terry Rozier for me, like always fights for my money. Like when yeah. I play Terry Rozier, he'll always try to win me the slate. And he won't always do it. You know what I mean? Right. And he'll try. I mean, he'll go six for 40 if they'll let him, you yeah. know? So, yeah. so, so I kind of like playing him in general um, in GPP. So I'll throw him on my list and, and who knows? I mean, it, it's, it's what, it's a two, 230 total. Um, mm -hmm. on the top totals on the slate. It's a pick em -ish game. Pretty close. Well, um, six and a half. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's six. It is six and a half. I don't have yeah. it, it less than that. I thought okay. New Orleans would have been like 10 and a half in this game. To uh, be honest with you. Um, and they're at home. So I don't know. Uh, I think this game could, could stay whatever. I didn't quite get to Zion though at that price. Um, that's that. So that, that's kind of interesting. Kind of like the shooters here. And, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see where I get to, but I think they're all kind of decent. Yeah. And, and the thing I want to throw out about Zion is that I actually think that he is probably even a little probably right where he belongs price wise but he did play 30 minutes the other night and he is legitimately completely unstoppable especially for teams like this so I, I could see him being a you know sort of in the in the John ja Morant mold of what we were talking about the other night who ended up having a huge night yeah. um, I think that uh, I think that, that this is a spot where he could go nuts the problem is it's just there's just mouths to feed Those, these guys. I mean, these guys all put up over 40 the other night and Valanciunas put up 38. So he had four guys over 38 fantasy points in one on one team, which is tough to do, especially in a game you win by a million. But uh, I, I mean, they're all totally in play. I think if I had to rank them, I'd say McCollum would be my favorite because he can shoot himself into a game at this price. But nobody that I feel like I need to play from this one, even though it, sh it looks on paper like it should be a great fantasy game. And and I and I just I I'm I'm into the Charlotte I, I'll play the Charlotte guys, but I'm I'm just not that excited about it. If if, if they were going to be lower owned, like sub ten percent, I would I would be playing talking about Ubre. I just don't want to play guys like that above ten percent, and I think that they're going to be significantly higher than that. Um, as of right now, they're going to show up as value. But again, slate might change as the day goes on, so uh, we got to be ready for that. All right, next one we have is I have Chicago against Washington. Washington. Yeah. Um, so I have this at about a 225 uh, total, um, a, a kind of a close, close-ish type game. And hey, you know, we were talked about oh, who's going to pick up the slack if Levine is out. Apparently, DeRozan picked up all of it. I mean, he was uh, he uh, man, good on him. I mean, uh, yeah, like a guy that nobody really likes to play, but but he just he 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 picked up the pace last year. And look at this, right off the freaking. Right out of the gates with 65 fantasy points, uh, 14 for 22. And he's still, you listen, he's never going to be a three point shooter, no matter, you know what I mean? Whatever the analytics say, listen, I'm it's too late in my career to really become a, a pure three point shooter. I'm just going to do my thing and uh, I'll do it better than anybody else. And that's what he does. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to mock Jack him for 60. No, but I still have him as a really, really strong play today. And it's not the type of guy you usually play, right? Coming I mean, guys right off a big, big performance, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, if Levine's going to remain out, um, I don't know. I think Chicago will give him the ball again. <laughs> I don't know what yep. to tell you. Um, so I like him. And then, uh, hey, why not? Uh, I'll go, you know, Vooch seems like a decent play. So he's he's good. And again, the same type of like mid-range to upper price tag. And on the Washington side, I don't, I don't have much. I have Kristoff. Um, you know, he's, he did play 32 minutes, which is uh, which is nice. But I kind of agree with you. I don't think he's going to probably play more than that. 
you know, so, so, uh, so yeah, he's fine. Uh, I think DeRozan's fine. I think Vooch is fine. Um, nothing really, no, no smash play, but nothing, but I think all three of those are, are perfectly decent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think the guy I'd throw in here is Desone Mu. Um, I, I have no problem taking shots with him. He, he, he looked great the other night. He put up 37 fantasy points in that game against Miami. Um, and I think Kobe White, even for large field stuff is kind of interesting, even though, uh, he didn't, you know, he didn't have much of a game the other night. He can always shoot himself into a game, but I, I kind of prefer the idea of Desone Mu. So I, and I, and I like DeRozan and Vooch tonight. I think this is a really good matchup. Um, they both just crushed their price tags the other night. And they and I think they could even do it again to end the same game, to be honest with you. Um, on the Washington side, I I'm having trouble like falling in love with a lot, but I, I don't mind the idea of just, just playing Kristaps and, and, and seeing which, which, which kind of game he has that night. You know what I mean? Um, always has a monster ceiling and, uh, and I, I could see him having a good game against these Bulls. Uh, Vooch, you know, not a great d- defending on the perimeter coming out. I don't see him doing that very much. Uh, so I, I'm I'm open to Porzingis. I'm open to Beal, but I'm not I'm not like excited to play either of them. I just like this game environment, so I, I kind of want to get some exposure here. So I'm sort of deciding what I can do, if anything, on the Washington side. The the other guys we need to mention is Monty Morris. Is um, it's it's probably. I think it's actually a pretty reasonable play. Um, but the, the, what scares me is the way that they cut his minutes the other night. Uh, I was trying to look into why that was. I thought he'd play more minutes, but he only played 22 minutes. Um, so it's probably Porzingis or Beal for me if I was going to run it back. But I definitely do have De- DeRozan, Vooch, or one of DeRozan, Vooch, or Disown Mu will probably make my very few lineups because, because as I said, I'll be flying later tonight. So uh, those are my three guys that I'll probably be using from this game. All right. Um, oh, this is another weird one. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, you know what? I, I think I'm on a different game than you. Um, no, we're only one. one more left in this time slot. Yeah, so it is the same one. Okay, so uh, so just first of all, I, I don't understand why Indiana is as little of a favorite. They're both awful. These are two, two bad teams. But I think the way they're currently constructed, I think Indiana is a much better team. So I, 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 would, I, think, I would think Indiana should be more favored by more than they are here. Um, I think you can make it. It's, it's, it's sort of that Spurs roulette again. Um, I think Sohan is, is completely reasonable. Uh, even at 48, I still feel good about uh, Vassell. I think he's going to have some up and down games. So that doesn't throw me off that he wasn't himself for most of the other night. Um, I don't even mind Podol. I don't mind. I, I just feel like a lot of guys who make enough sense to me, um, Vassell and, and Sohan being the, the two most logical, and then on the other side, you've got the Jalen Smith is still very reasonable at 5K. Uh, Isaiah Jackson is 3,800. Terry Taylor at 3,600. All of these guys are, are interesting. Um, and the one I'm going to sort of highlight, though, that, that maybe, I'm, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, although he was really good the other night. I really like this kid, Matherin. And he does a lot on the court, too. I mean, he's, he's just very, very active. He was the, you know, he was a, for, to, to remind, to let you know who he is, he's the number six overall pick in the draft this year. Um, really, really big, physical, talented guy who can also shoot it. And he is, he's going to have some big games this year. So Matherin um, and then Halliburton still to me, I think is, is very reasonable at 7,900. So I, I more have this game circled right now and I'll figure out the pieces later, but I think right now it sounds like Vassal and, uh, and uh, what's his name? Vassal Sohan and potentially one of Podol or Keldon Johnson. I think you can make a stack out of this one really easily. And I think you run it back with, uh, with Halliburton, one of Jalen Smith, Jackson or Taylor. Um, and then I'm open to, if you want to try Duarte again, but I, I really think this is a really good game to target for fantasy. A couple of things. Uh, so I watched pretty much that entire game as much as I could of the Indiana game, because when Miles um, Turner was ruled out, I mean, then be Terry Taylor and, Terry Terry Taylor became a good play and J- and Jalen Smith became a better play. Um, right. I don't better. Uh, again, he became higher owned as a result, but whatever, just on, on the numbers, he became a better play. So I had a, I had a good amount of all that game. You know, I had a bunch of Tyrese Halliburton. So I was, I was pretty much glued to watching what was going on. Um, and th- this was what kind of like, I like kind of watched a little bit. Of, I, I kind of like watching the games to get a sense of, of what's going on here. Mm-hmm. First thing I will say about with respect to the bigs, um, I do see that Jalen Smith himself is listed as questionable, I think. Yeah, he was questionable oh. the other night as well. Oh, okay. Um, 
he he was he was he's 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 a big dude. He was pretty active. Terry Taylor was pretty was was when he listen he got into foul trouble. They both did, you know. Yeah. But but Terry Taylor, I mean, he could shoot the three too. I mean, he got he he's he's a pretty good guy. Uh, he was pretty good. I don't know how much Isaiah Jackson get in, but I will mention that that Miles Turner was ruled out with about you know kind of like a half hour to go, you know. So they kind of like scrambled to like kind of figure out what were they going to do. I, I, and now they have like a full like two days to figure out what they're going to do, you know. So I just wonder how that's going to impact exactly what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I mean, wait, obviously, you know, see who they start. I, mean, I presume will be the same. You know, probably they'll start Taylor and 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 what's his name. Um, and uh, Terry Taylor, 3,600, if he starts again, is going to be a pretty strong play, if you want to know the truth. But the funny thing is, is we don't, is, I don't know, for those of you that haven't been watching this too long, uh, our, our podcast, we don't talk about the slate beforehand. Um, and it's kind of interesting when we come up with similar things or much different things, having not spoken about it. I was written, I had written down something like before to even, you know, before we even went, went on here today. And it was basically, I don't, I don't care about the projections or whatever. I wanted to make sure to let Bobby know how awesome I thought that rookie was for Indiana. <laughs> I was watching the other day. Um, uh, the, and, and, and Bobby comes right in and talks about him for the last, like, for the last 10 minutes, this Matherin. Like, so I was watching this game, and he was – <laughs> I was going to use exactly the words you used. I mean, he was extremely active, very athletic. He shot the ball a little bit too. Um, I really like this kid. Um, and I, this is a guy I'll keep playing. Um, 5,500 is not exactly a bargain, right? right. Um, but I, you know, it's somebody to, somebody to keep an eye on here. Again, I don't know if I'll actually get to him today, but, but you get these, and you, you taught me this. I mean, these young guys, what, listen, whether it be in basketball or golf or football or anything, you know, these are the guys with the upside, you know, these are the guys that, that could just all of a sudden pop. And then you're there. And then the funny thing is that sometimes the projections are a little slow to catch up. Not so much in basketball. They usually catch up pretty quick, but, but baseball, for example, you kept on saying these, these young prospects, you know, they have a lot of upside and sometimes you get guys that like three K for two K before, before too long, it's too late. But I don't know. I think Matherin is, is again, his price is not so great, but it's, but it's somebody to just keep a lookout for. So I'm probably mm -hmm. not going to play him today, but um yeah, but who knows? Maybe I, will. I, I, I may end up playing him. I, I, I'm okay. interested. I, I buy into this this guy, and I, I, him coming off the bench is even better. It's just, yep. and 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 I mean, you look at it. He, you you saw the other night. He does. I think he had you know four offensive rebounds early yeah. on, and he he just gets it. He's extremely physical. You'd think he he yep. was playing in the NBA for eight years. Like yep. Yep. he's a big dude. And Where's I just want to rehighlight the Keldon Johnson thing that I, I've always been on. That Keldon Johnson's really good, and now he's really kind of got a team a little bit to himself. So I I have this game as like such a hype like I mean I've I want Hall I want you know Johnson or Podol I want Sohan or Vassal or both I love Smith you know one of Smith Taylor or Jackson and then Halliburton or Matherin and I feel like you've got a nice four or five man stack if you get the right mix of those so that's what I'm definitely going to be be spreading this one around in my in my, my whatever number of lineups I end up playing I'll tell you this they didn't give him a break they put him at fifty six hundred his first start that's uh they don't yeah. even give you a shot to get him with this guy <laughs> it's yep. like uh, it's not like what was last year. Kate Cunningham was three K for like two weeks. It's I know, like, I know. It's pretty right. nuts. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about a uh, Boston and Miami. Very good real life game. Um, not so sure if I have any interest, if at all, on on for fantasy. I think that you could. I mean, Tatum at eighty eight is always going to, you know, sort of pique my interest a little bit. Um, that just seems like a little bit low for his ceiling. Bam seems a little bit, you know, cheap, even though he'd let everybody down and maybe the ownership comes down a little bit because his price got raised while he let everybody down. Um, but really that's all I have is, is Bam and, and Tatum potentially, but I don't feel especially excited about either one of them. How about you? Um, I'll ask you this question. Uh, I ask you this a lot. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bobby is, 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 has a really good sense for when, when Jimmy Butler is going to play basketball and when he's just, when he's not. Um, do you, do you think that this is the type of game yeah. that, that you that you get up that he gets up for against the Celtics? I do. Um, especially after like, I mean, he got punked a little bit the other night at home by Demar Derozan. So right. I think that this is a spot where you could you could play. I actually think that's a pretty reasonable idea. But if you're going to play him, I think I would want to play Tatum on the other side almost automatically. Well, you, um, well I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I have I have Tatum as basically the second. Well, I have like four guys, like, and I have Tatum as one of the top plays on the slate. So, yeah. uh, 
yeah, Miami's not a good matchup, but but the overall slate is not really packed with a lot of big scoring. You know what I mean? Like, so I I think that as you said, Tatum eight hundred is is pretty pretty freaking reasonable. Um, mm-hmm. and I would definitely play him on the other side of of Butler. You know, um, Butler when he only power forward eligible, so maybe his ownership gets kept down a little bit. Um, uh. And I do like Bam. Again, this is, this is the price range. This is what I've been, you know, alluding to all day. Um, and I'm not getting to anybody else in this game. Though. You getting anybody else here? I mean, Hero had a good game. Um, Hero will do that, you know. Like, yeah. and Hero will do that at a price that you like can't play him at, and it'll be like annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't play him at 6,900 or whatever the hell he was. And I think he scored like 50 fantasy points or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, uh, but I, I definitely like Tatum, uh, and I like Bam on the numbers. I don't like Butler on the numbers, but just kind of on. Kind of Butler on the instinct. How about that? Yeah, I kind of like I like that. I like the thought process that no matter what. But I just want to point out about Hero. The, the, the other night was the exact a perfect example of what Hero will do, though. I think he had thirty five fantasy points in the first twenty four minutes. Oh my god! And, and then he didn't get any more. And he had like that. one. He had like three more the rest of the next the next ten so minutes. So funny. Right? But I do think he has a breakout year. But he's so scoring reliant, probably yeah. enough to keep me off of him as long as he's above six k. But again, if you want to take our t- tournament shot, I have no problem with it. Um, the one guy who I who I won't play, who some people are, looks like he's projecting pretty well, is Kyle Lowry. Um, I'm just, I, I just don't want to mess with this. I mean, if he gets down in the four Ks at some point, maybe I'll do it. But he is cheap. I just, I'm just wondering where the ceiling is with with him anymore. So I'm probably not going to do the Lowry thing. And I wonder if some people are going to come on to that play later. I, he's just going to play minutes, and he's 5400. And that used to be like Kyle Lowry at 7K, we would take him automatically. Now at 5K, it still doesn't feel that automatic. So. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is not maybe maybe not the highest scoring game. And by the way, I, I do want to double check what the over-unders have been so far after night one. I think that most of them have been well under, but I, I haven't double checked and, and, and gone through it. I, I do want to keep an eye out for that because I I basically said I think that it's probably profitable to bet the under in basically every game uh, this early in the year. And we've seen teams with huge first halves and then literally score half as many points in the second half. It just feels like everybody's sort of working their way into the season. Um. All right, Orlando. Is that what would you what you have next? Uh, Knicks, Knicks, Knicks. Uh, uh, Knicks. Yeah, let me grab my Knicks and Detroit. Yeah, so 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 Knicks, Detroit. I I don't really have too much on the projections except for one guy who I would um who I uh, want to reiterate. I talked about this live the other day, and and he's sneaky, like had a really really good game, and I don't know if anybody used him, everybody played him, or whatever whatever it is, but they moved him up in price and. When they got this guy last year, I was really wondering why they didn't play him because it's not like the Knicks were loaded or anything like that. And I was like, why are they why are they picking up Cam Reddish and just not playing him? This was like the end of last year, like because he's awesome, and and he just had a bad situation wherever he was. And in his first game this season, in his last game, he got twenty eight minutes and scored thirty six freaking fantasy points at thirty eight hundred. Draft Kings, you can't get a break though. They moved him right away to forty five hundred. Um, I don't know if this is going to continue to be a thing, but if I'm going to get 28, 30 minutes out of freaking Cram Rash at these prices, I'm going to try this. Um, I don't, I don't see anywhere on my projection list. So can't imagine anybody's talking Nobody's about him. him. So, so, uh, you know, on a big slate for, for in the lottery, if I, especially on where there's really not the greatest value right now. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, this is, this will be my, my, my terrible take that no one's talking about is to, to take a shot with Cam Reddish in this game. Yeah, it's kind of a funk. That, that that that's the that's the long the that's the long shot play that, that could that could end up hitting there. Um, that was an overtime game that he sort of went nuts in the third, late third, early fourth yeah. quarter, and then they kept him on the court because of it. Yeah. Um, the guy I would actually think ahead of him though would be Hartenstein. Um, I don't care whether he starts or not, or Mitch Rob gets in foul trouble. It doesn't. I don't think that's even the whole issue. Like like Hartenstein is active. He's doing things while he's out there. He was really really good the other night. He played forty minutes. Oh, <laughs> Um, and Hartenstein, if he, if he plays 30 minutes at 4,700, he's a steal. I don't know that we can guarantee yeah. he's going to play 37 minutes or right. 30, 30 minutes, but, um, I think he's a steal. I also like the, the, the way that Randall looked a lot the other night, but I don't think in this is in this game that this is, this is going to be my, my thing. I think that I, I think it's going to be simply Cade or I think I actually, the X-Men, maybe it is. I think Cade and Hartenstein are my favorite plays, but I'm open to Randall, at, at very very low ownership again. Is he up to eight K yet? Can't, uh, Cunningham or he's seventy five. Seventy five still. Yeah, 
And um, and I'll, I'll highlight a few a few plays later on and on the, at the end with the fan duel different price differences. But and you know what else? These rookies and second year guys. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. I mean, when they when they go to Madison Square Garden, they want they want to play well. They want to they want to show out and and all the and and guys like this are can have are going to have real good games when they can when they can have real good games. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. So, oh, you uh, didn't yeah. see you didn't get to see Jaden Ivey the other night though. This guy you, you'll like him too. He's oh, a, really the other rookie. He's really good, man. He's. He's got a lot of uh, – he's, he's really athletic. He's really aggressive. Okay. Um, I think Detroit is going to – I mean, I really think that, like, in the next year or two, they're going to put a couple pieces around these guys, and they're going to be – 6,400, man. They're rough out there, though, these yeah, guys. Yeah, you can't play him, I don't think. I just think yeah. that he's, he's really, really, really good. Um, just in Well, the, do you like Cade today? I do. I do like Cade, but it's – I always – I just always like Cade. I'm a little concerned that Ivy takes away from some of his creation and everything. Right. They're both combo guards. They want the ball in Cunningham's hands, but they will run some specific plays where Ivy's running the offense. And that sort of takes Cade to be the sort of sit in the corner guy because he's not really a slasher. He's a really good offensive creator for the team, but they're going to they're gonna want some, some – you know, some of that from Ivy as well. So that's my only hesitance on, uh, on Cade tonight is that I, I think Ivy may cut into him a little bit and – the Knicks still aren't, aren't a team that I don't think is uh, is going to give up a you know more. I think there's a lot of teams that are going to give up a lot more points than the Knicks are. Um, so that's what I got for that one. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, to the next one here with uh, Orlando at Atlanta. This feels on on its face like it should be a good a good uh, fantasy game, but kind of having a hard time figuring out what I'd want to do if Cole Anthony plays or if he doesn't. To be honest with you, uh, I also thought Paolo looked absolutely phenomenal the other night i had my multi-screens going and i was watching that one <clears throat> this guy is really really good he's only the third player i believe in nba history behind other than matt, matt i think it was magic jordan and him who averaged who scored 25 and five had 25 and points and five assists in their first game ever like i was surprised that only three guys ever have done that um but but Paolo is really really good um i don't think i can get to him today and I don't think I'm going to be able to get to anything on Atlanta with the possible exception of John Collins. I think John Collins is a very reasonable play and uh, they definitely look, you look good the other night. So that that's, that's basically my, my favorite part of this game is probably Collins, but I don't think I need to play anybody honestly from this one. Yeah. I, um, I found this game from a fantasy perspective to be a cross off. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, uh, the, the, the scores you're going to get out of, or the games you're going to get out of, DeJounte Murray and Trey, when they play well, are just pretty much like they did in their last game. You know, like both of them around 50. You know, like I, I don't think that uh, – uh, I don't think you can really play either of these guys until one of them becomes like really underpriced. Um, I, if they're both going to be like 9,500 or something like that, it's going to be I, – I, I shudder to compare these guys to like Harden and Durant, but like, the same type of deal. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I, I just don't think you can play either of these guys when they're both in at 9K. Um, uh, and, um, again, looked, just, I have to say that as, as, as a basketball experiment, though, it yeah. looked really good the other night, they, yeah. both, yeah. they both had the double digit, they both had the, the, the 10 plus assists. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's, they, they might've made it, the move, that move might've even helped them more than people thought. Yep. Um, Toronto and Brooklyn. Uh, all right. This is, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with this Brooklyn team uh in general because they don't have anything out offensively outside of Durant and 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 uh Kyrie and even Kyrie did not look good the other night Ben Simmons is 6500 and going to play minutes um early on he's looking like a great value I don't know if I if I totally trust that and I don't know if I want to play Durant at 10-4 trying to get a 45 or 50 real life point game out of him in a tough matchup and on the other side, I think Scotty Barnes is always going to pop up as a play because he, he's basically always going to be in the mid thirties and he's going to have some games in the, in the forties and fifties. Um, and Siakam is, is, is totally reasonable to me against a Brooklyn front line that has nothing. So what, where, what's your take on this one? I, I'm having a little trouble because it's, it's, it's a, uh, I feel like I'd make a good argument for basically everybody on Toronto, except for Gary Trent jr. Yeah. I think that the, uh, that the whole Simmons thing is kind of a sucker bet until, until I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I just don't want to do it. Um, I, 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 it's one of those things you see him at 6,600 or whatever it is. I mean, it's like, how, how, how do you not, how do you just not do it? You know, like, mm -hmm. but, but, but I don't know. I, I want to see a little bit. I want to see a little bit of something. I'd rather play him at 7,500 in a couple of games, watching him do something good. I don't know. Right. 
Um, I, I really don't have much in this game. I have, you know, what I have I have uh, Pascal Siakam on the Toronto side showing up as yet another, you know, seven to eight K guy who's reasonable. Um, so I have that, but I didn't really get to anything else. I mean, I, I guess Durant beats me. I mean, I really, nothing really stands out for me in this game. Yeah, I I, th- I think that the one of Siakam and uh, and Anubi or or Barnes would be my favorites. Uh, but if no one, if not, I mean, and, and, but again, I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with playing Fred Van Vliet here. I mean, he yeah. he did, he he was a little bit more passive. It seems like they're going to give a little bit more of the reins to Scotty Barnes. But seventy six hundred, he's we certainly know he can pay it off. Um, I, th- th- we're going to have this problem with the Raptors while well, they're all like this. Um, because I think that, I think you're supposed to try to find the right one of these guys. And for me, it's Siakam or Barnes, um, especially in this matchup, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the Simmons thing might be a sucker thing on the, on the flip side, if he was going to be completely unowned, maybe you could make an argument for him there. Um, but I, 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 I agree. Most, mo- most of this game doesn't feel, doesn't feel that interesting to me for DFS purposes. Uh, you're just betting on a huge game from KD, and I have no idea why what Kyrie did to deserve to be priced up at 9,700. That just seems absolutely egregious. Um, all right, Utah, Minnesota. What do you got? Um, say this. I mean, uh, uh, Utah with a freaking strong game, man, <laughs> against yeah. Denver with the uh, no Donovan Mitchell, no matter, no no Rudy Gobert, no matter. Freaking put it on him. You know, uh, freaking good job. Good job by them. Um, and unfortunately, though, from a, a fantasy perspective, I don't know what to do here. I mean, I have everybody looks like kind of fairly priced. I mean, my, I have Cat as kind of my best overall player from this game. But um, I, I suppose some degree of Gobert revenge makes some sense, um, even though it's at, at home, even though it's at home. But I, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. You like any, you like anything here? I mean, I, I don't think it's how Gobert is going to get there. It's going to be from the rebounds and, and putbacks and things like that anyway. Uh, so I don't factor it in for very much for him. And at 9K, I just think it's a really uh, hard price. I know he scored 50 in the first one, but I just feel like there's other there's other guys you can go for. But this is, does feel like the kind of game where there should be plenty of shot blocking opportunities, plenty of rebounding opportunities, and uh, plenty of offensive rebound for, for putbacks kind of a thing just feels like a lot to spend 9k on him I actually think Edwards is my favorite player on Minnesota um, and he shot four of 17 the other night put up a lousy game but I, I Edwards is just, he's gonna do that and then he's gonna come out and shoot 16 for 24 you know what I mean or 28 or something like that and he's gonna he'll put up you know 45 real life points and you'll feel like a genius for playing him he's just gonna be all over the map sometimes um, on the Utah side I, I'm not really finding a way to get to much and Markinen, I don't want to pay 5,900 for, even though I know he was good the other night. Uh, yeah. I just don't feel all that excited about, about Utah in this one. And uh, I, it's a good matchup for everybody on Minnesota. And it's a good, good matchup for Utah, but I just don't, I don't really have anybody who stands out as I don't even know which guys are going to get enough, give enough minutes to um, they want to lose. They, I don't, they won like they won by a million, but eventually they're going to want to lose this season. Um, I don't think, I think it's probably too early, I guess, to worry about that, but yeah, it feels like a game you should want to do something with, but I just can't quite get to, get, can't quite get too much. So Memphis Houston, I mean, if Houston had any doubts about, you know, what they were trying to accomplish this year, they, they're going to, they're going to start Bruno Fernando over Sangoon for no reason. It's I like don't a, know what, what they're doing <laughs> in that last game. Um, I mean, he played great. I, I He played really well, but I don't know what the right. hell it was. Right. Um, so I guess the I guess the 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 key for me in this game is first of all I think yeah you know, listen this I don't know if this game stays close or whatever it is but 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 Morant is you know he could I really think he could score as many fantasy points as he feels like in this game if you want to know the truth mm-hmm. um, and like I said on, on a slate where 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 upside and big scores are really not that easy to come by I I, I think this is probably one of my favorite plays just to take Morant hope he needs. Hope that hope he needs to or chooses to go off and just and just just take it. And the other guy from this game is um is the rookie, I guess. Is he even a rookie of uh, the Aldama? Um yeah, I like Aldama. Listen, he's another one that I guess he must have played into that overtime um to get the 40 minutes. So he'd be the other guy I had from this game. I didn't get to, you know what? I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't find a way to get to conjure the first time. Um 
and people played him and he kind of kind of went off um i suppose he made like off. six threes i think I, yeah I, uh, yeah he was four for nine from three. Oh, i thought he made more my bad yeah and i'm not getting to him today either for some reason so i don't know um actually let's take a look at this for a second yeah it, it, so, sometimes they just have when you look at his last game they show the april game they don't even update yet but yeah they do have his last game in there um yeah, so i like moran good. i like moran i like aldana and on the houston side i, I suppose I suppose if they're going to start Fernando again, you should play him. I don't know. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, Kevin Porter Jr., I suppose, uh, would be the natural guy to pit to play alongside of uh, Moran uh, to try to keep the game close enough to force Moran to put up his ceiling. So that, that's what I think about this game. Yeah, I, th I think that um, I, I, I don't mind the, the Durant idea. I'm sorry, the Morant idea. The, the only priority I have for Memphis is Aldama. Uh, on FanDuel, he's 3,800, so even a better play over there. Wow. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, look, when, when they're, when they're, when they're in tough games, that they're gonna, they're gonna leave enough of, uh, enough of Adams out there to where I think that he'll be okay on certain slates. I'd probably want him a tiny bit cheaper, even though he's actually probably appropriately priced. But I do, th I do think he's in play at 5,300. And I, I, I'll say this, it's gonna be one of Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green. Shangun are going to go off on most nights. Uh, I, I, I'm not playing Bruno Fernando, uh, but I don't feel overly in love with everybody else. I think that if I had to pick the other ones, it would be Kevin Porter Jr. Uh, followed by Jalen Green. Those would be my two favorites. Um, that's pretty much all I have over here. I think that maybe I want to see if Jabari is still cheap on FanDuel um because i think he's going to be like right around that 30 range enough of the time probably not enough of the ceiling to play and on DraftKings. but if he's still sub 5k where can i get it over here that's really weird they have a different huh i don't know why i can't find the game on oh there it is uh no that's really weird there's no memphis updated on my sheet here uh anyway but i i don't i don't think uh I think Kevin Porter Jr. Jalen or Jalen Green. Not I don't I don't like playing those two guys together. Although it is a good pace game, um, and and again you you mentioned Morant, but I like Aldama as my 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 top play on the other side. But um, yeah, I, I I think the prices are just about right for the Houston guys, so it's not quite as good a value as we got night one. <sighs> that's a, that's one I think that again another one to circle Memphis Houston and then the indie game I think are my two favorites so far. If uh, if you wanted to try and just go for it and stack a game. Denver, Denver, Golden State. Um, I mean, the, my projections are currently projecting these other guys as getting these minutes, but I, I see no, no proof that Murray is out. You know, he's just questionable. You know, he was he was questionable in the preseason. He was quite, you know, he was questionable going into the, into the into the first game, and he played. I mean, I I couldn't imagine why they wouldn't that he wouldn't play at Golden State. You know what I mean? Like, how do you not play that game unless you're really hurt? Um, so. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to presume that he's out quite yet. Um, uh, I, I definitely think that 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 Jokic um, uh, can have a nice bounce back game. Obviously, I mean every game he's you know every game he's going to look good. You know? uh, he didn't particularly perform in this last one, but whatever it is, um, he's still going to be the top projected player on the slate as far as points go. Um, and it's hard to it's hard to say it this way, but they hope they keep the game close. You know, so, so, yeah. So, you know, um, uh, Golden State's tough. You know, and and if and if, if they don't keep it close, and you only get the free, you don't get that fourth quarter six minutes out of uh, out of Jokic, you're dead. You know, so um, um, and the funny thing is, well, can't get get there in three quarters. Well, it doesn't work that way because if you got there in three quarters, then there wouldn't be a blowout in the first place. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so right. uh, um, just be careful about this one. But he certainly looks to be the best best overall play. And then if, if looks and Murray is out, I mean, then you have Bones Highland, you have um, Ish Smith, God help you. You know what I mean? Like these are the guys you're going to have to deal with and whoever else projects well. I'm not seeing anything on the Golden State side right now. Um, so for me, it's pretty much Jokic or kind of watch the injury report for the, uh, for the, uh, for the guards. Yeah, I think that I mean I I I will guess that Murray doesn't play. I don't see any reason after all the injury stuff he's had that if he's ever questionable, I'm just going to assume that he's out. Especially he's not even okay. questionable; he's doubtful. Um, so I would say that it's it's 
with the, with the with the injury thing, but I, but I don't know. I mean, it, it could it could go another way. They did, you know, he only played twenty six minutes the other night. They oddly played Michael Porter fifty. They, they played him uh, thirty five minutes the other night. Um, he had a lousy game, but if if Murray's out, I think I think going right back to Porter mm-hmm. or or playing Jokic is is totally reasonable. And then on the cheap end, I think I prefer Bones Highland ish Smith here. Um, but I am open to both of them, uh, and I think they're going to be similarly owned, similarly high owned, and I, I just like Bones a little bit better. Uh, but again, if it's a total blowout, then well, I guess if it's a total blowout, they both get run. Um, yeah, I think this. I think I think you want something, some part of this. But I so I have and and uh, Michael Porter Jr. or or Jokic, and then I have Highland or Ish, and I don't have anybody as you're going to hear very often from me from uh, Golden State. If it had to pick anyone, I would pick Jordan Poole. Um, but I am oh, maybe Wiggins is reasonable too. But I, I just don't think you need to, to need to play these guys. They just they're so deep. They play so many so many bodies. Um, somebody probably gets there sometimes, but I'm, I just don't feel good enough about anybody to take that shot tonight. All right, so, or is it, if you didn't like any of that, right? Is the yeah, last- if I didn't like any of that, I don't think I'm gonna like this either. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, um. Phoenix, Portland. I mean, Phoenix is a Phoenix is a tough team to get fantasy points against um, uh, for openers. On the Phoenix side, I don't mind. You know, I don't mind Booker. Um, I guess he he looks decent. Aiton's just kind of okay. The Portland side, I don't know if I necessarily want to chase Josh Hart thirty eight minutes, um, going eight for eleven, perfect from the field. You know what I mean? Like I I, I don't I don't know. He's probably going to show up to be the best play on this in this game, I guess. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's not the type of guy I, I like to play, especially if he's going to get some ownership. So I don't know if I'm going to get much in this game, anything, maybe a little bit of Booker, but I don't know. It just seems kind of a, kind of a, kind of a late night hammer yawner. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I, I don't have a ton of interest as well. Um, if I have to pick anybody here, it would be probably Hart um he's gonna play a million minutes every night so that's not i don't think there's anything outli- outlierish about the minutes i think you're gonna see him play 40 a lot of times um i i just i it's not a, not like you said not a great matchup to to score a bunch of fantasy points but portland sort of creates their own pace and you know the sun's here with a 224 total it's pretty high for them they made a tr- congrats hey, they made a tremendous comeback the other night because they were about to be humiliated back to back to end nope. the season last year and then they were getting nope. smashed and they made a nice comeback which is where booker kind of went off uh, Chris Paul looked very old uh, in that game. Did he uh, like sit in crunch time? He missed a lot of. He missed. I mean, he only played thirty minutes. Um, he played most of it, but he didn't play the entire thing, uh, the entire crunch time. Oh. But um, yeah, I, I feel like this is not a, not a great fantasy one, with the exception of maybe uh, maybe Josh Hart as a middle piece. But and and, and he did put up thirty six the other night. He's got a ceiling. He can he can always get hot. But with all these guys healthy, feels kind of weird to me to play Josh Hart over like even Michael Porter Jr. with no Jamal Murray or something like that at the same price, same position. So uh, I think I'm probably going to be off of it. And and that kid, just keep an eye out for him as the season goes on. Um, I thought Shaden Sharp looked really good the other night. This is a guy who was, you know, could have been a top two or three pick last last year if he, you know, he was the number one guy coming out of high school, just had the whole weird college situation. And uh, just as the season goes on, beware, because they might start playing him more and more, and it's going to take away from these Josh Hart's and Jeremy Grant's and all that. Chris Chris Paul did not close this game, by the way. He did not close. He did not close. Oh, interesting. He played the first six minutes of the fourth quarter, and they took him out. They left Damian Lee in uh, to play the entire uh, fourth quarter. Uh, he scored 11 points in said fourth quarter, Damian Lee. Mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense, but that's uh, – it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty hurtful. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, got hot. They probably, look, look, they ended up, look, they ended up winning. So whatever, you know, but, uh, sure. Chris Paul was, was none too pleased about it. Um, but Hey, when, you know what you have, they, they, they they committed to win a championship now, you know, they can't have, can't be about individuals nowadays, uh, in this, in this team, you know? Um, but that is a little bit, uh, yeah, he was, he only had six points. Uh, yeah, he only had six points. So, (laughs) Yeah, it was. I uh, was six points. He 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 was one of the guys with the minus. Uh, he had the minus nine uh, yeah. as far as uh, plus minus and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, I just think it's it's. Uh, I think we might be seeing the decline. It's just really hard for little guards to keep playing this far into their career. But we've said that well, the last 
four years about Chris Paul and somehow he's still been doing it. Um, all right, real quickly, I'm just going to highlight uh, some of the, my, so I like the idea of playing one of DDR or Vooch or Disonmu. I don't mind if you want to play two of them, but I probably wouldn't play DDR and, and Vooch, uh, DeRozan and Vooch together. Uh, it's not the worst thing though, if you do, I, I don't think there's any problem with it. Smith Taylor or Jackson from Indiana, Halliburton or Matherin, um, Ke Keldon Johnson or Podol, Sohan or Vassal. And again, you could play some of these guys together, but that's just how I, I'm dividing it up. Tatum with maybe Butler or Bam on the other side. Cade, Scotty Barnes uh, or Siakam, Aldama, KPJ or Green, and then the whole Denver situation, which we have to figure out, but I probably will be playing at least one player from Denver on most of my lineups if Jamal Murray's out. This, this is a really, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't looked at Popcorn Machine, it's a, it's a very uh, insightful tool to give some context for some minutes sometimes to see mm -hmm. like where they, you know, why they got X or who, who came in for whatever. Like, it's so funny. Like I see DeAndre and I presume he got into foul trouble because he played like seven minutes in the first quarter and six minutes. He came out and never came back in the whole second, first half. I mean, he didn't, he came in, it looked like, like maybe well, this would happen. So he had two fouls. He came in for one minute in the second quarter yeah. and they got another foul. So yeah. then they came out and then he didn't play again until the second half. And they basically then let him roll the whole second half. Yeah. Um, so uh, he did get his 30 minutes and, you know, but, but what, what, so then what happens is some people say, Ooh, boy, Jock Landell, maybe he's, he's set for some actual minutes because he came in, you know, uh, the only reason he stayed in for long and biz Mac Biombo, he came in, he got some minutes, but those minutes are fraudulent. Like the only reason right. he got any minutes was because, Eight and got that third foul or whatever foul trouble getting killed to try and trying something different i agree yeah so so it provides a little context for some for some of these some of these minutes and that's where you can see by the way that chris paul people oh well, this ball wasn't a big deal he still played 30 minutes yeah but he didn't close and that's something to think about so i don't know absolutely and um real quickly to highlight some some just good values that are maybe a little different in some cases on uh on fan duel uh oh, let me grab yeah. my fan duel list real quick. oh why did it just take me to DraftKings? damn it Okay, let's go to FanDuel. All right, sorry. Um, Santi Aldama, thirty eight hundred, as I mentioned. Uh, no, he's forty three now. This is really weird. What is going on here? Did I am I getting the wrong yeah, place? I have him as the old, the best value by a lot. Um, yeah, FanDuel. But I have him at forty three hundred. I guess not not thirty eight. Yeah, forty three. Forty three. Uh, they had it literally on the screen. It said thirty eight before. I wasn't hallucinating. I don't think. Um, maybe I was. Uh, Aldama at 43, Sohan at 45, Jabari Smith is only 48 over here. Matherin is probably the one that screams out. He's 4,300 on FanDuel. Um, that seems like a, even Cam Johnson, Bones Highland at 39, like this Isaiah Hartenstein at 42. There's a lot of value on FanDuel and you don't tend to need it, but these are all really, really good values in my I'll, opinion. I'll, th I'll throw another one on there who I thought I forgot to mention. He looks okay on DraftKings too, but he looks better on FanDuel and he's, I'm showing 20% ownership as well. Is is Cam Johnson from Phoenix? Yeah, um, I, said, I threw. I said him. Oh, you said him. Okay, yeah. So he's. I just think him versus like Matherin. I just would much rather play Matherin than him personally. Yeah, Matherin is the only difference. Matherin is is just shooting guard eligible, where you could play yeah. Cam Johnson in two spots. That's Tom yeah. is only power forward eligible. Hartenstein is only power forward eligible. You have Conchar, Conchar who's 4100. Um, obviously, if 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 Murray is out. Boy, Bowen's high on 3,900. It feels wrong to do it, but... Um, but I, I, I'll i never feel too wrong with Bones Highland. That guy can go yeah. completely off. He's, he's okay. I mean, he's super talented. They let him sort of run the show at times. And I mean, if if, if you're not going to... Like, I I don't play him in lineups with Jokic, but if he's if Jokic, you know, anything happens, he gets in foul trouble or whatever, and there's no Murray out there, and for whatever reason, MPJ is either struggling or hurt again, Bones Highland could go completely nuts. Um, we saw it a bunch of times last year, so I will uh, I'll keep an eye out because I, I, he's a guy I have marked going forward as I think he's going to be a really, really important six man for them. Um, but yeah, so those are pretty much the the highlights of and the, and again the two games that I that I would target if I had to to pick two would be Memphis, Houston, and San Antonio Indy. Uh, of course, not the most fun. Only only Memphis of any of those teams is is any good. But uh, I do think that, that those games should be up and down with a lot of fantasy points and. I, again, just want to throw out that other warning though with the Spurs. They played how many guys? Did they play? I think they played twelve the other night. Um, six, eight, ten, maybe just eleven. But I think they played twelve, and it just makes everybody on the Spurs a little bit scarier um, because they, they again they 
they're going to probably tank. It's still hard for me to believe that Co- Pop is coaching a team that's that's tanking, but um, you just know, me nervous every time San Antonio shows up and they're going to keep showing up, unfortunately. Here's another name, uh, maybe not for tonight, but whatever. We were, we were speculating the other day about who was going to guard uh, Jokic or who Utah had coming off, and this guy Walker Walker Kessler is a rookie. Yeah, he was a first-round pick. Yeah, um, and he – he 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 outminuted um Olytic. I mean, he played 24 minutes. Uh, you know, he has that you know that uh, what you call it that uh, that Moses Brown you know uh, stat line. You know, five for five from the field, two for six from the line, ten rebounds. You know, whatever. Um, I don't know somebody to look for in the future. I don't know. Yeah. Good good luck good luck in this matchup. We'd either go bear or cat, but. You know, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, but I will, I'll be live. Sheets is out tonight. At, I'll be live at six Eastern and then I'll right before I hop on my flight and we will, uh, we'll, 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 you know, tighten things up there. I'll get my, my early builds and my, uh, my, my bets of the day and everything up. And again, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep hammering these, these unders uh, as long as I, I feel that that's still going to be the case. And I think these teams are going to struggle at times, but um, the league is playing faster, but I don't think they're necessarily playing as efficiently. So All right. Um, Good luck to everybody today, and I'll see you guys at 6 Eastern. Yep, Bobby.